I wanted to share with you that, you know, there's four dispensations that's mentioned and, and that we're going to be going through because we're, we're in a series called Past, Present, and Future. And so the first one was the patriotic, uh, patriarchs, and that was from Adam to Moses. And then came the law, which was from Moses to Christ's first coming when Jesus first came. And we're in the present age, which is from Jesus' first coming, and will end at the end of tribulation. It's uh, when Jesus' second coming comes in. And, you know, even during that time, some will be saved. And so I, I just want to encourage you with that. I'm giving you a little prelude to some of the things that we're going to be talking about today. But the future and the fourth one is the millennial reign. And how many people want to make sure you're at that one? A thousand-year reign with Jesus, and, and uh, you know, he is just uh, an amazing God that loves his people so much. And so I just want to encourage y'all that uh, we just really got to be making sure that we're, we're, um, we're storing up some oil. Amen? So um, uh, a prophetic is a blessing. Prophet, the, the prophetic is a blessing to those who are preparing themselves because um, they're living a life serving God, seeking God, you know, um, blessing others, loving God, loving others. And, and that's, a, that's when the, the prophetic is going to be a blessing to us. Why? Because we know who we are, we know where we're going, and we know whose we are. Not only who we are, but whose we are. Amen? Amen. So I want, want to encourage you with that. But um, on the other hand, the prophetic is a warning to those who are, that are not living for God. That he's saying, hey, get ready. I love you, and, I, and I, I don't want you to miss it. I want to spend eternity with you. I love you, and I care for you. And th- that's really what he's saying. And he's telling us, you know, I'm, I'm praying that's all of us and all of you online that's watching, that, that we're ready, or at least we're in the process of getting ready, but we're winning as many souls as possible. Because that's the heart of the Father. That's Jesus. I, I wish none would perish, but all would come to repentance to receive everlasting life. That's his heart. And so we want to have the heart of God, right? Boy, that was a couple of you. We want to have the heart of God, right? Amen. All right. So in the next couple of weeks, I really want to help uh, kind of clear the air with um, the 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 different perspectives on pre-trib, mid-trib, and post-trib. So uh, there's a lot of controversy with that, but I hopefully will, that, that debate that we've been seeing, and, and I just got to say this, just in advance, I have so much respect and, and uh, thankfulness for many of th- uh, theologians that have a different view than, than what I found to be true in the Word. However, however, I've got to stay the course in what the Bible says. Scripture interprets Scripture. Amen? So, uh, but hey, I, I love them and, and I bless them. And, and I just feel like this is a time for us to get ready. This is a time for us to, to really um, be watchful of, of what you're buying into. You know, um, we had a dear brother that he, he was being tossed to and fro from every, for, by every wind of doctrine we got to be careful that we don't get tossed to and fro. Hallelujah. So we're going to turn our Bibles to Revelations 22.7. We're going to be in a lot of scriptures today. So you buckle your seatbelts, get your, your, your pens out or your, whatever you take notes with. But I really feel like this is something that we all need to be aware of and we all need to know the truth because it's the truth that's going to set us free. Amen? All right. Are you there? Okay. It's um, verse seven says, look, I am coming soon. Blessed are those who obey the words of prophecy written in this book. So to, you know, to shout out to any of you that might think prophecy is not for today. There you go. It's the word of God. Amen. All right. So Revelations 22, 10 through 15 and the New Living Translation says this. Then he instructed me, do not seal up the prophetic words in this book. For the time is near. Say near. Let the one who is um, doing harm continue to do harm. Let the one that is, uh, who is vile continue to be vile. Let the one who is righteous continue to, be, to live righteously. And let the one who is holy continue to be 
holy. How many people know that God's given us free will? And sometimes he will allow us to, to go into a place that we ought not be. Hope, but he's all, always hoping that we're going to turn around and run to him. Amen? Okay. 12. Look, I am coming soon, bringing my reward. Whose reward? His reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes. They will be permitted to enter through the gates of the city and eat the fruit from the tree of life. Hallelujah. I'm going to, uh, verse 15, outside the city are dogs, sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idol worshipers, and all who love to live a lie. Woo! How many people know there's a lot of that going on right now? We got to pray for them. We got to pray for them. We got to pray for them. Let me just say this. We know that we all believe here uh, that we don't judge people into the kingdom. That's not our place. We love them into the kingdom. Amen? So we just got to pray, pray, pray. But I, I, I want to back up to um, verse 14. It says, blessed are those who wash their robes. How do you become whiter than snow? The blood of Jesus. That's what's going to cleanse us. That's what's going to... all our, our, our rags, I mean, our clothes are like filthy rags unto the Lord. But when the Father sees you and me, he sees his son, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But there, you know, there are lots of different opinions uh, in Scripture and the interpretation of Scripture. But the key is that we need to be making sure that our Scripture is being determined by Scripture. And, and we can't cherry pick a Scripture. We've got to make sure we do some cross-referencing. So we're going to do that today, this morning, and uh, for the next couple Sundays that I'm with you on this subject until we get done with this series, I really want to dive into the end times. I really want to dive in to um, bring in some awareness of, of what the Bible says about what the timeline is and what's going on and what's going to happen. And I'm, I'm hoping that it's going to catch you to where you feel that the prophetic word is a blessing to you because you're ready. Or at least you're, you're aware that I need to get ready. Amen? No matter where you are right now, whether you're a person that believes in pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib, please have an open heart and spirit, and then just look at to see what the Word of God is, is speaking to you today. Amen? And uh, so let's, uh, let's look at some things. But first off, I want to just tell you, I really believe that our God, how many people know that our God is a God of love? He is love, actually. Right? And if, and if we truly know his nature and his character, we know that he's a righteous God, he's a just God, he's a loving God, he's a caring God, he's a, his mercy endures forever, right? He's compassionate. Matter of fact, Jesus, every miracle that he ever did, and, uh, that he ever did, it says he did it out of compassion. So I just want to encourage you that if you know the very nature and the heart of God, then I don't ever believe that God would want you and me, this is just me, a disclaimer here, I don't, want, I don't ever believe that my God would want us to go through the great tribulation and say, hey, just serve me and follow me and love me, and then you can go through a tribulation to where in Revelation 6, one-fourth of the earth is going to be destroyed. And then Revelation 9, another third is going to be destroyed. I mean, by the time you get, it, we're in ruins. It's, it's just crazy to think that way in my heart. So I had to go to the word and say, Lord, what is really the truth? And so I think that all of us need to do that. We have to, we have to examine what he's doing. But in the same token is we have to be uh, conscious of who he is. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. So uh, as we look to this, we see, you know, that, uh, you know, with all the seals and the different judgments that's going to be coming, it's not for us. I'm just telling you, friends, it's not for us. Not if you're truly a, dis a true disciple. We, we, taught, we learned on that last week, right? By this you will know that they're my true disciples. You know, we, we also learned that the, the, ten, the ten virgins, right? Five were ready and five were not. Five had plenty of oil. 
They all looked the same. They all had the lantern. But only five was ready. Only five was pursuing a relationship. Only five was, are you guys getting this? So so we have to be ones that are storing up oil. We need to be in our word. We need to be in prayer. We need to be in relationship. We need to worship the Lord. We need to get, don't come late for one of the most important things. Come and worship the Lord, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. We've got to be a people that have a heart to worship him in spirit and in truth. And I I just got to tell you, I'm stirred up about this because so often we get to where we want to go about our lives like we want to go about our lives. And we want to do things that are comfortable to us. Well, I don't care what your voice sounds like. And if it bothers me enough, I'll move. I just want to see people worship Jesus. And it's not just with song, it's with their lives. So we just all need to worship him with our our life, right? All right, 1 Thessalonians 1.10. We're going to break down some some truth here. Uh, and, And to wait, it says, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead. Who is that? Jesus. Even Jesus who delivered us, say delivered, delivers us from the wrath to come. Did you get that? Okay, all right, let's keep going. Uh, Luke uh, 21, verses 34 through 36. I told you, we're gonna go through some scriptures today. It says, watch out. Don't let your hearts be dulled by carousing and drunkenness and by the worries of this life. Don't let that day catch you unaware. Like a trap for that day. Are you noticing it's saying that day a lot? I want you to pay attention to this. So that day will come upon everyone living on the earth. Keep alert at all times and pray that you might be strong. And and New King James says worthy enough to escape. Say escape. These coming horrors horrors, and stand before the Son of Man. And some um, some might uh, even say this coming wrath. Can I tell you something, friends? This is telling us a little bit. It's giving us a hint that we need to be ready. And he's, and he's cautioning us and warning us to get ready. It's that prophetic word that God has given us that he's wanting us to understand that that it's up to us, it's a choice on how we live and where we live. But not only for here, but while we're here on earth, with, which is just a blink in comparison to eternity, but where are we going to live for eternity? And that's what we have to decide. But for me, I and my wife, we, we feel like, hey, I don't want to just be concerned about myself because I, I can make those choices. I'm praying for y'all. I'm praying for my kids. I'm praying for my loved ones. I'm praying. Come on, we got to be reaching people. We had the, come on, yeah. So we had the, we had the dog group, the Disciples of God group, and I was trying to share a, a, a quote, and I, didn't, I messed it up, Mike, didn't I? I don't think I did a very good job of it, but I, was, but I was basically sharing that, you know, I heard someone say that we all need to be witnessing for Jesus. We all need to be sharing uh, the love of God, and when necessary, speak. Come on, we need to be living a life that looks like him. Amen? So we need to love well, and and we need to, you know, another thing I just heard is that, you know, a lot of Christians aren't very generous. They're stingy. Well, let me tell you something. I don't want to believe that for a minute, but I can tell you one thing. We got to be givers. We got to be people that can give our time in prayer, give our time in worship, give our time in serving. Whatever gifts we have, we need to be people that are willing to give it. You know, we were in um, Matthew 25, and and it talks about how the three servants, and you guys have probably heard the story, but the three servants that the master had given them each some money according to their gifts, according to their anointing. So uh, one he gave five, um, you know, bags of silver to, another he gave two, and another he gave one. And so he came back after a, a long time, say a long time, and what happened was as, as he came back, the, the one with the five said, here, my, my, my Lord, here's, I doubled it. So here's five extra. So he had 10. And he says, well, go, well done, my good and faithful servant. Let's celebrate. Woo! 
Come on, I, I don't know about y'all, but I want to get before the Lord, and he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Let's celebrate. Come on. And then, and then the one that had two, well, he was just as happy as the one that had two. Why? Because this is talking about how the, the gifts that he has saw that, he, that, that you have, that if you use them well, they're going to multiply. See, you're going to have opportunity when you're faithful in little, just like my sister was talking about, when you're faithful in little, he'll give you much. And if you're faithful in much, he'll give you much more. Amen? But we have to be givers. We've got to be people being willing to pour out your, your life for Jesus. And I'm not talking money. I mean, that might be a part of it. You might have a gift and an anointing to create wealth, and God wants to, you to use that gift for his glory. Amen? But I'm talking about winning souls. I'm talking about sharing the love of God, sharing the word of God. I'm talking about if you're an intercessor, be praying faithfully. And then there was the one that, <laughs> when he came back, he buried what he had been given. He said, you lazy, wretched person. I don't want the Lord ever to say that about any of us. He has entrusted us. Can I tell you some parents, he's entrusted your children to you. And, and he's entrusted our kids to us. We've got to train them up when they're young so when they get older, they will not depart from. So you that are having little kids, and just teach them about Jesus. And when necessary, speak. You know, um, as we look to that scripture that I just quoted, some people might say, well, that's because they're protected by the Holy Spirit. And I, and I just, I've heard people say that, and it says in, in verse 36, I'll just read it again. It says, keep alert at all times and pray that you might be strong or worthy enough to escape these coming horrors and stand before the Son of Man. And and some people, well, yeah, that's because, you know, I've heard this said, that's because the Holy Spirit's going to protect them. But, but let's look at what the Scripture says. Revelations 13, 7. Uh, and then we're going to go to another one that I'm going to show you that's going to relate to that. It says, and the beast was allowed to wage war against God's holy, say holy, people, and to conquer them. And he was given authority to rule over every tribe and people and language and nation. What is this talking about? This is talking about the Great Tribulation. This is talking about that time. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 through 18, if you can turn your Bibles there, we tell you this directly from the Lord. From who? The Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. We know we've heard that before, right? For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First, the Christians who have died will rise from their graves. So encourage each other with these words. And one translation says, comfort each other. Well, you know what? It'd be very hard to comfort that, hey, you're going to have to go through the most horrific and most terrible times in the history of humanity. But be comforted because I'm just telling you, as long as you stay the course, as long as you're strong enough to get through it and just white knuckle it and just grit your teeth and it doesn't matter if there's you know earthquakes and stars falling out of the sky and and all these pestilence and all these terrible things happening hey don't be worried we just we if we think we have it bad now it's like a cakewalk compared to what we're gonna see let me tell you something well or some of them are gonna see I'm not gonna see it so hopefully you're not gonna see it either uh, I'm believing for that. So but what I'm trying to get at, it's in the word, and we're going, to start, we're going to start diving into this a little deeper. But, man, my God loves me, and, and I really believe that he wants to bring us into a place where he's not just going to have to protect us from others, but he's going to get us ready, and he's going to come and get his beloved ahead of time. Amen? All right. So, Revelations 20, verse 4 through 6. Then I saw thrones and people sitting on them that had been given the authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded, say beheaded, 
for their testimony about Jesus and for the proclaiming of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his statue, statue, nor accepted his mark on the forehead or on their hands. They all came to life again, and they reigned with Christ Jesus for a thousand years. This is the first resurrection. The rest of the dead did not come back uh, um, uh, to life until the thousand years had ended. Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. For them, the second death holds no power. But they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign um, with him for a thousand years. So why am I saying this? I want to share this because when when we look to this and they say, well, no, they're going to be protected. No, they're going to be beheaded. This is what this is saying. The Antichrist is one of the most wicked people that's ever gonna, you're ever going to see on the planet. And he's going to be going after Christians, the holy people, with a vengeance. Now, who, why is there Christians there? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because we know that in the time, it said, um, as we learned a couple weeks ago, that it says that, that the, the end... Times is going to be like, the kingdom is going to be like uh, the days of Noah. That they will be having married, they will be getting married, having kids, doing all the normal life stuff until that day when the door was shut. It's until that day, right? And, and when, it, when that day comes, then all of a sudden it's done. Then destruction came. And it's going to be like the days of Lot, that all of them are, they're doing their, their perverse things, they're doing all their whatever stuff, and they're marrying and they're doing all whatever, living life until that day that the angels came and said, Lot, you have to leave before we can bring destruction, before we can bring judgment, before that we can send down hail, fire, and brimstone. Are you guys getting this? So it, it's telling us that we have to understand that there's a time that's coming and God wants us to be aware of it and he wants us to be prepared for it. Let me, let me, uh, let's, let's, let's go to um, Corinthians 3. After all, who, uh, who is Apollos? Who, who is Paul? We are only God's servants through whom you believed. The, God, the good news each of us did the work of the Lord gave, um, that the Lord gave us. I planted the seed in your hearts, and Apollos watered it. But it was God who brought it, made it grow. Or, or some might say brought in the increase, right? So it's not important who does the planting or who does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. What is the kingdom of God? We've talked about this. Seed, plant, harvest. Everything you speak is a seed, and it's going to produce a harvest. Everything you do is a seed, good or bad, and it will produce a harvest. Whatever a man sows, he shall reap. To the measure he sows it, he shall reap it. That's why we want to be about our father's business, and we want to be sowing good things on good soil so we can reap a harvest that's, uh, that's giving glory to God as it's blessing others. Amen? All right. Verse 8. The one who plants and the one who waters work together with the same purpose, and both will be rewarded, say rewarded, for their own hard work. For we are both God's workers, and you are God's field, you are God's building. You're the temple of the living God. Verse 10, because of God's grace to me, I have laid a foundation like the expert builder. Now others are building on it. And I'm going to go on down to um, to verse, let's go on down to verse 12. Anyone who builds on that foundation, which is Jesus Christ, uh, may use a variety of materials, gold, silver, jewels, uh, wood, hay, and straw. But on the judgment day, say judgment day, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. 
The fire will show if the person's work has any value. If the work survives, the, the build, that builder will receive a reward. How many people want to receive a reward? Come on now. Um, <clears throat> but if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved, but like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. So what is this saying? It's saying you're not going to lose your salvation because you haven't done a lot of work for the Lord. But there is going to be lots of different levels in heaven. Uh, Lots of different rewards in heaven. So in other words, you know, where we live for eternity is determined by what we do while we're here on earth. Now you can say, wait a minute. Faith, uh, you know, we're, you know, we're by faith, we're saved. That's right. And that's what it just said. But it's by what you do will determine where you live and how you live for eternity. So I, I want to encourage you with that. But I want to also encourage you with something else. That, that not all of us are going to be able to, you might say, well, you know, I mean, in my last 30 years or so, I probably led hundreds and hundreds of people to the Lord. But can I tell you something? That's not boasting on me. That's boasting on God. But I was, I'll just give you an example. We, last month, we were at the park, and we were ministering and feeding the homeless, and, and we had a group of us that went over there, and I had the blessing and the honor to be able to lead a man to the Lord. But can I tell you something? Mike was there, so he's part of it. He gets, he's, he gets a part of that reward. George was there. He gets part of that reward. Conscience was there. She gets a part of that reward. We all share in the reward. Are you guys getting this? When anybody ever gets, gets, gets saved here, Guess what? The children's workers are getting a reward. For you that invest in the kingdom, for you that just do what you can, and maybe you're, maybe you're just really good givers, and you're given to where we can keep the lights on, and we can do the work of the ministry, and we can feed the poor and deliver the lost and, and heal the sick. Well, maybe that's what God gifted he gave you, so that's the five you're going to turn into ten. That's a reward. So we're all going to get part of the reward. So it doesn't matter who's sowing, who's watering. We all are partakers of the word because God's bringing in the increase. He gets all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Come on up, Brittany. We're going we're gonna to close right there. But I, I just got to tell you, friends, it's important that we understand that God loves us so much and he wants to bring us into this place of knowing that... Um, that we need, to, we need to be ready. 